Oh, this is one in it. Yeah, let's just get let's just get this one into place. Ba 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 ba. So this is courtesy of Junction Two Festival. So as most of you are aware, I've what when have we been to Junction Two Festival once? Is it once or twice? Once, 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 once. I think it's once. It doesn't matter. Junction Two Festival is one of the best festivals we have here in London. Um, it's probably one of the loudest as well. You know, there's usually a lot of noise complaints when it comes to London festivals. So the fact that they're able to crank it up really loud in a sparse um, location underneath a bridge, great stages, great usual lineup of people playing, a very diverse crowd. It's probably one of the best and premier places to go and of course you know due to covid it got cancelled last year and it's more likely than not looking to be cancelled this year but interesting enough i got an email from junction 2 festival uh, peeps um you know kind of rounding up their live stream thing that they did the other day and kind of talking about their plans for the future and they decided to post this which i kind of uploaded on my twitter page and this following the screenshot so this is um junction 2 basically saying that they're looking forward to 2022 in terms of they want to put on an event which is looking highly highly dubious but again an interesting approach that they're sort of taking so it says the following with vaccinations swiftly rolling out across the world we move forward into 2021 with renewed vigor excitement and enthusiasm about dancing with you all together very soon a celebration two years in the making awaits in junction two returning on the 4th and the 5th of june so they already kind of have a plan in place of returning right on the 2nd of june as per usual right so on the 4th of, and the 5th of june as they do per usual so they've kind of got that penciled in even though there's been no real um indication from the government at all that the you know that the hospitality industry is going to be allowed to reopen or restart in any kind of meaningful way um it continues uh to mark the special occasion we have assembled our strongest ever lineup of the likes of Fortet, Nina Kravis, John Hopkins, Hessel Odio, Ben Clock, Adam Bayer, Amelia Lenz, all set to brace the stage. And the interesting thing about this is that if you look at the list of people that are playing, it's the same list of people that you would have seen play um playgraves during the entire period of this lockdown right and playgraves or these events that were usually put on in spite of the local restrictions for gathering in place um sometimes they were posted in third world countries where they were, could flout the rules and and some people would kind of accuse them for contributing to the overall spread of the virus and essentially putting more time at the end for us to kind of not go and party because you know as the virus spreads and it continues and um, more likely than not um, restrictions will continue as well which will mean that we are not going to be able to get back to a dance for anytime soon so there's this kind of collect there's this kind of um, accepted belief or deceptive idea or hope that somehow because of lockdown things will change and we'll get back to promoting local artists and having residents play and not only you know especially with brexit there won't be any kind of um there won't be a reliance on getting these big ticket people to come in and fly in and play these places that was a hope always right that was a big hope oh this is what's going to happen but the reality of it what we've basically seen especially with the playgraves is that because you're doing a play grave that you probably shouldn't be doing right especially given the circumstances and you're the promoter or you're the event booker or you're the person in charge for tourism of your country you don't want to take any chances so what you're going to do you're going to go book the top 20 10 five djs in the world who you know can sell tickets you're going to try and get them in for a discount because it's covid and then you're going to sell the fuck out of that event and then get your money back but this whole idea about saving a scene, um, hiring new people, giving young kids a chance, um, representation, diversity of lineup is going to go completely out the window. And I think this lineup should serve as a warning um, for what's to come. Like if anybody's thinking things are going to change for the better, I don't think so. In the, in the, especially on the biggest stages, I think they're just going to adopt whatever uh, methodology and plan and approach that they had prior that worked because it was working prior to lockdown. It might not have been effective. It might not have been um, transformative. It might not have been innovative. It might not have been impactful in any way, shape or form, but it worked for them pretty well. So why would they change something if it's not broken, especially if there's no incentive to. Um, so, what you're most likely going to see going forward on the bigger platforms is that you're going to see these big festivals, these big promotion companies just do the same thing they did prior to COVID in a really accelerated and really turned up fashion. So don't be surprised to see like marathon back to back sets with all these big, you know, playgrave type of DJs playing 
but then I think also that then puts the onus back on bootstrapped organizers of events who are kind of operating on a smaller budget to then go out of their way to then get those people who should be getting more slots more opportunity to play to cultivate a fan base or maybe getting in people for your representational um purposes but that's how it should be going you should kind of start from a grassroots but just to, to expect big ticket festivals um big names big brands to do that they're they're gonna somehow play any role in saving a scene is naive in the extreme and i think this um flyer or this email that i got from junction 2 should serve as a cautionary tale things won't really change for the better if anything i'll just return back to where they were but if anything the only people that will change is people like you and i who are kind of on the ground you know kissing babies shaking hands uh doing the groundwork they're the ones we're the ones that are going to change it in some meaningful way so if you've got an event that you want to put on if you're thinking about getting back into the promoting game i think this would probably be the best and ample time to do so there's a real prime opportunity to kind of go out there and rewrite the narrative um kind of sculpt a whole different scene and community but don't sit back and expect these big festivals to decide to go and do it for you because that is not going to happen as proven with this uh with this email that i received here from junction